Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I want to share with you our daily math binder. I'm going to show you how we put it together and what kind of materials are in the math binder as well as share some tips for you so that you can put together your own math binder no matter what curriculum you use. Now in front of me are a variety of math workbooks. Now most of these are hand-me-down or ones that we got at like discount stores. And these days the only math workbooks that we do buy are by Key to Curriculum Press. And I have a video showcasing all of that curriculum and you can check that out at the end of this video. And that video link is also in the description box below. So here I've got all these different grade levels for these math workbooks. And when I am putting together my daily math binder for my student, I tend to choose math workbooks that are one to three grade levels below where he is at. And this is for a couple of reasons. The main reason is that this daily work is supposed to be quick, easy, somewhat repetitive, definitely review, something to increase the proficiency of these skills, these math skills, which for me are going to just be the basics. So it's basic arithmetic. I want my children to know it, know it well, be able to do it quickly and not have any kind of worry about it because it's going to be the foundation for all other math later on. Since my son is going into sixth grade, I don't want to put any math workbooks and worksheets that are at his grade level. I want this all to be review. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove the ones that are sixth grade or, or up and keep those for another time. And then of course, I've, I've got ones that are really young, like this one is second and third grade. I'm gonna take that one out as well because I wanna stick with things that are around fourth and fifth grade level. So now I have a nice assortment of math workbooks that are going to work. Then I want to prepare my math binder. This is a simple three ring binder. These are actually the really nice ones. They're by Avery. They're not the ones that are going to bend. I would recommend investing in a couple of these really nice ones. We've had these for probably 10 years and you can definitely see signs of wear, but they have held up really well. And by the way, I picked these up from the 99 cent store, so they were only a dollar and they retail for far more. So check out your, you know, your discount stores. You might find some really good quality ones for inexpensive. The next thing I did was I picked up these tab dividers. This is always going to be here. It's always going to have these same labels. I don't need to change them. And so we can just leave this once this is set up. I can leave this permanently. Now, before I move on, I wanna share with you what we did mid-year last year. Now, we had been using this binder system for quite some time and it started to get a little bit stale and my kids weren't as interested in it anymore. And we wanna keep things lively and interesting and something the kids can look forward to. Otherwise, it starts to make homeschooling really dull. So I pulled out these, uh, what do you call these? <laughs> folders. <laughs> I pulled out these folders. Now, these are folders that I have also had since early on in our homeschooling journey. I've had these for well over 10 years. And I have altered these over the years to suit our needs. You can tell there's been different things uh, attached to these different folders depending on what our needs were. But basically what we did last year was for my last year, my fifth grader and my ninth grader, we had five of these folders. And what I would do is on the inside, I would put any of the daily work that my children need to do. So it wasn't just math, it'd be math and grammar and maybe a couple other things kind of mixed in. I also took our key to curriculum series and I tore those pages out and I put them in here. It worked really well for about a month and then the whole system started to cave in. One of the main problems was that I had to be on top of this on a weekly basis and get the work in by Sunday night so that come Monday morning, my kids were ready with this work. It did not work as easy as this, which I'm gonna work on this now. I'm gonna have this set for the entire year. And I don't actually have to keep it in the binder. If I wanted to, I could pull the sheets out and put them into something else, but at least it's done and ready to go for the entire year and it's only gonna take me a little bit of time up front. These ones required 
weekly maintenance and I found that that just didn't work for me and our homeschool lifestyle. If I can set up something like this, which requires not too much thought, it's the same thing, it's pretty repetitive. If I can set this up at the beginning of the year, I have a greater chance of success that we can actually use it. However, like I said, it did get stale after a while and that needed to be updated a little bit. So with these folders, and I have a video on how we use them and that is also linked down below. Basically, we put these envelopes in the back. The works, the worksheets were inside here and then when the children were done with their work, they just slipped it in in the back and that way you could see that all the work was done. All right, so let's move on to how we're going to fill this book right now. Now there's a couple of things that are gonna make this a lot easier. The first thing, of course, is this hole punch. Now an alternative to this is that what I could do actually is take all of these workbooks. Let me just get the stack that are basically the same size. I could take these workbooks over to my office supply store and they could three hole punch the entire stack for only a dollar. That is a great value that would save so much of my time punching out each one of these. And something else they could do is they could go ahead and trim off the spine and that way I would have all of these pages loose. Now the reason why I'm not going to do that now is because I want to keep these in their workbook so that I can pull out the sheets that I want. It would have been a value to have them three hole punch because at least the spine would have stayed on. But I'm going to go ahead and use my three hole punch today. The other thing is that I went ahead and put some of these label holders up here. These are really nice. I picked these up from an office supply store. These are the Martha Stewart brand and they come with some foam adhesive on the back. And these have been really sturdy and strong. They have stayed on for at least five years that we've had these. And then I need to update my little label. So I went ahead and I just stamped a new label for my son rather than doing this on the computer as I did before. And that's gonna slip right in here. And that way, when these are all on the bookshelf, it's gonna be easy for him to see which one is his and then he can just pull it out. And the whole point of having this is to have some independent work that he can do while we're still getting our school day going or while I'm helping another student. If you're working through your own curriculum, but you want to add daily math into the mix, I would recommend number one, going with a grade level that's below where your child is at. Now don't be alarmed. A lot of the stuff that your child is going to do at his grade level is going to include review work anyway. Now one thing that I would caution against is a page like this. Even though I'm going to keep a page like this in his book, I'm not going to have too many of them. These are just way too many problems. And what I tend to do is pull out one worksheet and oh these are going to be a little bit harder to get out <laughs> the binding isn't going to make this one as easy to get out but that's okay we're going to work on it but basically i'm going to pick one page front and back per day we have 20 school days in the nine months and that gives us 180 school days so rather than having him just complete one side and then the next day the other side it's just a lot easier to pull out one sheet and call that one day's worth of work now in order to have this be one day's worth of work i really want it to only take no more absolutely no more than 10 minutes to do this because this needs to be these quick easy lessons that he's doing on a daily basis. So as I go through these different workbooks, I'm going to try to find things that are going to suit those particular goals that I have in mind for my child. And once it's in your binder, then you can use this as like your master math worksheet binders. It's just going to be a place that's going to keep all of your material in one place. Now you might wonder why not just take an entire workbook and give that to your child instead of putting it into a binder. That is a totally suitable alternative and you can completely do that with no problem at all. There's something about the little pockets of work that my children need to do when it's not an entire workbook that makes it seem less overwhelming when you're just looking at 10 sheets between you know the the two tabs or 20 sheets between the two tabs it doesn't seem like it's such a, an enormous amount of work to do as compared to looking at what this workbook happens to be small but as compared to looking at one of these workbooks which are you know quite large the paper itself is quite thick and it just seems like it's going to be so much work to get through even though you can see on a single page here you didn't even have that many problems 
All right, so time to start pulling these different worksheets out. I'm going to look for a nice assortment of them so that we're not just sticking to one kind of worksheet over and over and over again. All right, so I have 180 worksheets here. They're from a variety of different workbooks and they're not in any particular order right now. I just know that I have all the worksheets that I need and I wanna mix these up so that it's more interesting for my son as he goes through this. Now, I wanna show you the workbooks that we actually went through. This one, I picked out a lot of the pages that I wanted. There were some pages that were already written in and so this book is probably going to end up in recycle since I don't feel like there's enough of this book left behind to give to anyone else. I did go through four different workbooks here. We went through this entire one. Now this is third grade level and originally I did not want to use the second and third grade level, but I found that there was a lot of really good simple review for multiplication and division. So I went ahead and I used both of these. And then I used two fourth grade workbooks and I did pull from a couple of these other workbooks as well, but not that many pages. This whole set of Myquan books I picked up from a friend recently. She was getting rid of these along with the uh, teacher's manual and originally I wanted to pull pages out of here because I noticed that there were a lot of simple math problems in here that really suited our needs. However, once I started pulling from the other math books, I realized that instead of just taking a few pages out of each of these workbooks, I wanted to keep this entire set together since we have all six volumes as well as the teacher manual and this way another family can use the entire series together rather than just having a workbook that's missing some pages since I would have only taken about 10 or so pages out of each of these workbooks. All right, so now it's time to sort through these worksheets and put them in basically random order. All right, the binder is done. It took about an hour to do. I've got 20 assorted pages in each section. And at the very back of the binder, I put the answer keys as well as the table of contents of each of the workbooks that I used. That way I can use this to give to our teacher so that she can see the different topics that are being covered. And also I can keep this for my own records so that I know the different mathematical areas that my son covered this year. So this is meant to be part of my son's opening activities or just independent work that he can do on his own. So if you're going to try doing this this year, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. And don't forget that you can check out that complete curriculum review for the Key to Curriculum series by clicking on the screen right now. Or you can check the description box below for that link.